Astra 600. Held up. Astra 600. Really bad. Hi, this is Misha, and I just thought we would look at a pistol today. We've kind of talked about some Spanish guns, but this is one that came in during that Tennessee pickup I had a month or two back. This is a Spanish Astra model 600 slash 43 chambered for 9 by 19 Parabellum 9mm Luger as it's commonly known. And this is kind of an interesting firearm footnote in history. Well, what do we have here? We have the attaching a round mag, pretty simple. We have a magazine disconnect safety. We also have a more conventional safety that doubles as a slide lock. We have a straight blowback gun, which is actually quite interesting. The fact that it's a full power gun that's a straight blowback. We do have a slide hold open. but no release. We can lock it open, but not in this position. Actually, that is a little bit further forward. If I can do it here on camera. These springs are really stiff on these. There we go. The notch is a little different position. And that's actually for disassembly. The mag release is quite interesting. It's technically, I guess, what you consider a heel, but it's a button on the side, and then it has a lanyard loop behind it. And we also have a grip safety. This is a concealed hammer. It's not a striker gun. We have fixed sights. wood grips, and that is about it. So what's the story behind the Astra 600? Well, to talk about that, we need to look at its predecessor. It's here. This is the Astra Model 400 or M1921. This is essentially the same gun, but whereas the 600 was chambered for 9 by 19 Parabellum, this is chambered for 9 by 23 Largo. Now, Spain ended up with this cartridge in military service because of Bergmans it purchased way before World War I. That's a story for another day. But the Bergmans led to a Compo Gyro or Compo Gyro pistol that was produced in relatively small numbers in Spain during the 19 teens. They had a couple of versions, the 19, the 13, the 1916. They made about 15,000 of those. But by 1919, the military was not really happy with the Compo Gyro, so they were looking for a replacement, and that's where the Model 400 steps in. And these were tested and approved for military adoption in 1921. And these are based on the Compo, as well as, to some extent, even a little bit the Bergman before, but simplified and streamlined for mass production. They have all the features of the gun we just looked at, single action. Interestingly, again, this is a straight blowback gun. There's no locked breech. That's why the recoil spring is so stout on these. We have what's called a tube slide. As you see, the slide rides inside the frame. It's actually a very tightly fitted gun, 
and because of the simplicity and tight fitment, these are known for accuracy. And they're actually known for being quite durable and dependable. On the other hand, they're quite heavy. This thing weighs more than two and a half pounds, and we have a barrel of about six and a half inches with an overall length of over nine inches. It's a very long, big gun. It has an eight round mag, but it has a more conventional heel release down here. force the back have a standard lanyard here most of these do have wood grips but some would have synthetic rubber hard rubber especially early on Astro would manufacture these for the Spanish military primarily from 1923 until 1946 when they were officially replaced by the STAR Model A. And they would wrap up production around 1950 with about 106,000 of these built. So this was the 9mm Largo version for the Spanish. However, in 1941, about 6,000 of these were sent to Nazi Germany. Now, Spain was nominally neutral in World War II, but realistically it was an ally of Nazi Germany. So it, Astra sold them pistols. These would still be 400s like this, with officially the 9mm larger chambering, but the Germans would inevitably try their 9x19 parallel parabellum cartridges in them, and they would work okay, but since they weren't made for it, they had very long headspace and there were feeding issues. So in 1943, Astra and the Germans came to an agreement for Astra to produce a version of the Model 400, specifically chambered for 9x19, and that's where this comes from known as the 600 slash 43 for 1943. It is the same gun in the new chambering. They did shorten the barrel to 5.3 inches, so a little bit shorter. And as you saw, a different mag release and a different lanyard. And of course the magazine itself is different, but otherwise they're the same gun. So Astra would actually manufacture these with a very high degree of fit and finish they're very well fitted together with very little rattle. What you're hearing rattling is the lanyard primarily. There's just not much in here. They're really well fitted. They're also well blued. It's said that they were trying to impress the Germans and I can believe that. And the first batch was ready by May of 1944. So Spain started shipping these to the Germans at that time. But then D-Day happened so by July of 1944, the route between Spain and Germany was cut off as the Allies would progress further and further south in France. Only 10,400 to 10,500 of these made it to the Germans before they were cut off. Now the contract had been for at least 50,000, so the majority never left Spain. But the funny thing is, the Germans had paid for them. So after the war, Spain would actually sell the Astra 600 to West Germany. And I do mean sell. They sold it to Nazi Germany. Then they argued that West Germany was a different organization, a different government. So they sold them a second time to the West German police, primarily. Yeah, they double dipped, but you know, hey, whatever. They would ultimately make about 59,400 Model 600s. And these are all pretty much made 1944, 1945, <coughs> maybe getting into 1946 a little bit. So yeah. Again, most went to the West German police. A few actually went to the Portuguese Navy. 
Some went down to Chile, and some were sold on the international market or even civilian market. And that's about it, guys. It's an interesting pistol. Kind of often overlooked. They are very interesting to shoot because of the straight blowback system. I wouldn't exactly say they're punchy because, again, this spring is very stout. But it is just a straight blowback. Anyone who's fired like a Makarov, kind of think of that. Yes, 9mm Parabellum has more recoil, but it's also a heavier gun. The triggers on these are not great. They're military triggers. They're, I mean, they're, they're acceptable. They're usable. But there's a little bit of take out, and then there's a pretty hard, but pretty crisp break. You're not going to accidentally discharge it, but you're not going to exhaust your finger pulling it either. So it's acceptable for what it is. These were continuing in service in West Germany for a number of decades. Many of the 400s and some of the 600s would be bought as surplus by Inner Arms, everyone's favorite Sam Cummings, and sold in the USA from the late 50s through the late 60s as surplus. So these are actually pretty common in America, although not as much today as they once were. Why I have this out, I just brought out a holster, a typical flat holster these are stored in. Kind of looks like a Luger holster because of how long that is. Got a spare mag here. And that's it. No real provision for a cleaning rod or anything. Very typical holster. Well, this was available, so I thought, why not show it? Check them out. They're, they're really interesting. The, the, the fact that there are some non-locked breach, that there are some direct, straight blowback guns. It's quite interesting. To disassemble these, it's pretty simple. It, they're, these are, to some extent, based on Browning's designs. You just kind of lock the slide back in the takedown position. Then there are the notches in the barrel. Rotate the barrel and then let the slide go forward and then the slide and barrel come off the frame and from there you can further disassemble. It's pretty straightforward much like say a Browning uh, 1903 or you know, uh, what am I thinking of? Ah, there's some other ones. You know what I mean guys. But that, that kind of era of guns and that style of rotate the barrel. Ah, Spanish Ruby is another good example. But, uh, but yeah, so that I would share with this. If you have an Astra 600 or an Astra 400, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. There's also a smaller version called the Astra 300, which was made in both 380 and 32, and it really is identical to this, just scaled down and smaller. And some of those were used by the Nazi Germans as well. They're, they're pretty neat. They're kind of cute little guns. We appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, subscribe, and if you'd like to help support us, do check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and we will catch you very soon next time.